Now what we have today is worse than the situation, the, the way it was. Things are getting worse. Because of this business as usual mentality. Taxation, more and more taxes to the people. Taxing the people of Zambia. This is not good. Tax will not help this country. Apart from that, we also need to know that as long as local government remains in its current state, it will be very, it will be impossible to deliver the services to the people of Zambia. Because councils right now, though we are we keep saying that no, we have decentralized, what is happening in reality is not so. We still have central government controlling how councils are running. Because each district must be in charge of which destiny. And we have said it's about time that the power to run this country was given to the people in each and every district. Scrap of all these useless institutions, organizations like ERB, what is ERB doing? We just be meeting every day to, to, to announce the new price of you? Is that why you are paying all those huge allowances, all the huge pay to this so called ERB? We've been talking about this. Look at RDA, Road Development Agents. Why do, to, why do we need to have the RDA when roads are supposed to be done by councils in their localities? We need to build capacity. If you're talking about capacity, we are building capacity in useless state corporations like RDA, National Road Fund Agency, ERP, useless institutions. All these must go. So that all those people and these institutions must be taken to the counties, must be taken to, uh, to councils, so that these councils can be, can, can be the uh, deliverance of services to the people of Zambia. Service delivery is not a central government. Why is central government taxing the citizens? Why? This is a question you need to ask. Why are they taxing the citizens? This must be for services. You pay, pay as you earn. Look at your pay slip. They spare as you earn. You are paying for insurance and many other things on your pay slip. But at the same time, if you are renting a house, you pay withholding tax. And that, that's taxation. And then, if you have a plot somewhere, you are paying service fees to the councils. So, the, that, the pay as you earn you paid, what is it for? That's the question. Because the concept of taxation is actually meant to help to, to provide the services where you are. If you live in Matero, you live in Zambia, in a township of Kafu or wherever, when you pay, in fact, this, these rates must be paid, service fees must be paid to a local authority where you are. You don't need to pay, pay as you earn. You pay to a local authority service fees. When you pay those service fees, they are going to come and collect your garbage. They are going to the roads. That way, you see where those service fees, you, you see how the service fees are being used. You pay service fees to the council. You pay land rights to the Ministry of Lands. What kind of competition exists in this country? We need to streamline taxation. This is very important. Some taxes, most of the taxes, more than 90% of the taxes must go. So if you give breathing space to the people, and then you ask, how will therefore even all these local authorities or the government have money to run? First of all, what is important is to look at the services. And the services are where the people are. People are in the municipalities. And this is the most important uh, area that we need to look at. If this country is going to come out of this mess, you don't need to send money to Lusaka. Money must be paid to the locality. Even this big ZRA, Zambia Revenue Authority, it must be scrapped off. And when you ask, when you scrap of ZRA, what happens? That ZRA must ask for any time the Minister of Finance, a unit. And then let the local authorities have the revenue unit. So that we have one collecting authority in each locality. And what each revenue collecting authority is collecting, when they collect that, a percentage you call central government to sustain the running of central government. The rest must remain in a given locality. Then you may ask, how about those localities that do not have uh, much you know, financing? This is where now, the money we are making from the mines, because we have these resources that the Almighty God has given us. That's why we need to come up now with taxations now. We need to tax foreigners. We need to tax investors in the mining sector, for instance. There is no way, when you look at, there is no way these mining corporations can go away with it and then we are looking away. 
Go to Saudi Arabia. The United Arab Emirates. There is no pay as you earn in the, in the United Arab Emirates. Instead, government shares the profits with the people. That's why they have oil. How many times has the Zambian government shared with the people of Zambia how much they're making from the copper? How much they're making from the Emirates? And when you go out begging, we don't want to embarrass the president. No, the president has gone out. No, he has gone to many, so many countries. He has, we have a pledge of $4 billion. That's a joke. $4 billion, you jokers. $4 billion? Is that what the president of the entire country can go to beg $4 billion and to say, no, we have pledges in $4 billion? What kind of jokers are you? I have friends, friends, personal friends. One of them netted $2 billion at the age of 25 years. He's a billionaire. A Jewish friend, a fellow Jew. Another one, another Jewish friend, is a billionaire. He makes profits of $2 billion per year. $2 billion. He's best in Switzerland. $2 billion per year. I have another friend, a Jewish friend, whose net worthiness is $10 billion. Now you are talking about no, there is a pledge of $4 billion. What kind of jokes are these? This is embarrassing. Sometimes I meet all these billionaire friends of mine, billionaire friends. They laugh about these things. You people must be serious. We don't need to subject the president of Zambia to all those kind of movements that are not adding any value to our country. And we are talking about $4 billion. $4 billion. Do you know the GDP of Israel, for instance? GDP of Israel. Israel, Israel's population, this country's population is almost three times bigger than that of Israel. The GDP of Israel is half a, a, half a trillion dollars. Ours, $30 billion thereabout. The GDP of Israel, a tiny country, is worth almost the GDP of the entire Africa with billions of people. Why are we not allowing innovation and thinking and doing things the right way? You can't go to this globe trotting, developing the country by globe trotting has been applied before there's not helped us. We don't want to talk about those who are, who are gone to be with the Lord, former presidents, who are globe trotting. They didn't bring anything. And we need to focus on finding a solution here. We need to sit on a table. We need an index. Call the people. He who has no wisdom must seek wisdom. If you have run out of ideas, seek ideas. Sit on the table, brother. Sit on the table. Consult the solutions you are looking for within this country. Don't kill local businesses. Don't kill, because when you target all these big businesses owned by our own fellow Zambians, you are looking at the money. When you go to bring in multinationals, you are taking the money out of the country. And that you expect money to be in this economy. How do you expect Zambia to, to, to come out of the problems? You are taking money out. There is no cooperation that will come for the love of Zambia. Any international cooperation that comes will come for the love of our copper. They come for the love of our Mukuna. They will come for the love of our emeralds. They will come for the love of our gold. And not for the love of the people of Zambia. They have their own countries that, that where they come from. And that's the priority. How did these mines run before all these ones came? And we saw what came out of the mines under the Libyan government. We cannot be joking like this, no. I think it's about time that we became serious with the governance of this country. And when it comes to running of the, the republic, if someone is given a sector as a minister, someone fails. We cannot keep people are failing. Failure just by one day is enough to kick out that person, replace those with people that will put this country first, that will put this our nation and the people of Zambia first. This is very important. And as long as we not do this, this country is doomed. And these hardships that we are seeing will be worse. Things are hard. Life is hard. And we need to think of that old woman, that grandmother, 
We're scaring for orphans who wake up every day. Those people are selling tomato vegetables on the streets every day. And look at the tomato they are selling. How much money are they making? How are they fending for their families? These are the questions that we need to ask ourselves. We don't need to have this elitist kind of mindset. It will not help this country at all. Let us look at those common people. And let us look at what works and as we have said, we need to encourage innovation. Let us look at young innovators and invest in young innovators and promote local businesses. Killing local businesses will not help this country. And especially the use of the anti-competition commission. It's wrong. You don't unleash the SEC on companies or corporations that are functional. Now when you go and kill, for instance, you go and kill Savenda. Savenda employs thousands of people in the country. You go and kill it? Why are you killing it? You look at what, what you are calling issues. Nothing. Even someone who is not learned, a lay person will tell that there's something wrong with you. Just because maybe you have personal vendettas, personal issues, certain scores. No, it's time to settle scores. Let us not use government to settle scores. If you have issues, leave issues outside government. When in government, look at the bigger picture. And this BTS I'm talking about, where you only target investments from certain countries. For instance, urban systems. Urban system has not taken a single dollar from this country. Urban system is listed on NASDAQ in the USA. This is an, this is a Jewish, uh, an Israeli corporation. On NASDAQ, it's a multi-billion dollar corporation. This is BDS you are targeting. B, this is BDS. BDS must be hated. BDS brought the Holocaust. That's how it started in the Nazi Germany. Targeting Jewish businesses. Because people become jealous of the Jews. That why are Jews prosperous? Why are they rich? Why are these corporations sticking? Now you want to target them here in Zambia. Saying this is, it's a BDS. Stop BDS. There's a price to pay for BDS. Because the Jews are bound never again. Will, the, will another Holocaust take place? You just apply the ideas. Jews have a lot to teach or something that, that can learn from them. We are brothers keepers. If I'm doing a business here and I'm stuck, we believe in helping one another. But at the same time, we don't want to beg. Beg is not allowed because a man who has no money is not different from one who is in the graveyard. If you have no money, this money, we think that you have money, we want to, 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 uh, to, to, to look at money to, to like the some the way you look at money, this this poverty mentality has killed us also. In in Africa, in our regions, if you have no money, if you are not prosperous, you are not different from the person who is dead. If you are not prosperous, if that's what they are teaching you, you need to prosper. People like to refer to in the faith. I know that even among Christians, we are talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These were wealthy people. They are not beggars. Rich people. They are not moving with, with beggars. Pots going to beg. No. They built empires. They built businesses. Solomon, the richest ever to, 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 to exist. And, uh, and there will be another one like Solomon. These were with King David. Rich people. And the wealthy, or shall I say, the, the, the extent to which a king is rich must be seen by the by the servants. How are the servants living? How are the people of Zambia living? So, the point I'm driving is, let us look at where we can learn, where we can learn good ideas and apply them in, the, in our country. We need knowledge. And build a hub. This country can be a hub. We can be the biggest exporter of electricity in the region and the entire continent of Africa. What is Zambia known for? We have water resources. When water, the rain, rain for talking about rain for, go to Israel. They harvest the rain. As that rain for is taking place, they are harvesting the rain. They have reservoirs country where to keep that rain. And they recycle that water. Now here we are. We have rivers, rain for, and we are talking about Kadipa. My goodness. It's about time that we invented something new. It's about time that we began to look at growth. It's not growth to keep up taxing the people. The other point I want to talk about is the issue of targeting the men and women in uniform, defense and security. Fellow citizens, we need not celebrate when you see what is happening. 
the men and women in uniform, they maintain our security and our territorial integrity. We need to respect the Zambia Army, the Zambia Air Force, Zambia National Service. These are important police forces. Then the men and women, the unsung heroes in the Zambia Intelligence Service were not uniformed. And yet, they're the fulcrum. They're the main drivers of security. Because it's the spy men that must help, who must supply information to all these agencies if they are to win the battles, if they are to keep us safe. They are not in uniform, but they are very important. The intelligence community must be adequately funded. They need plant and equipment. They need to be supported. You cannot apply austerity to defense and security, no. It's not applicable. To intelligence, you can't apply that. Then the main one in responsible for internal security, the Zambia police, and of course, correctional facilities, correctional service. Very important. Let us respect these men and women uniform. These men and women uniform. We don't come to see a culture where we see civilians harassing these men. What we saw, I mean, on social media, I think that was in the church, that's totally unacceptable. We don't want that. Don't treat these men and men in uniform. We have a defense force that, that can be proud of. The police that can be proud of. These men work under very difficult circumstances. And we need to support them. They need our support in countries where you see these men and women fighting every day to defend the nations. Citizens salute them. And I think those Zambians in the diaspora can confirm what I'm talking about in America, in the UK. When you meet them, a person in uniform, even as a civilian, you stop and say, thank you for what you do for this country. We are not doing that in this country. We are not respecting these men and women. This is totally unacceptable. And we cannot tell these men how they must run security, the security of this country. For instance, no, we don't need checkpoints. Remove this and so forth. Until you have a problem, that's to understand the significance of checkpoints. No, remove speed traps. Until you have a problem, then you understand why you need speed traps, why you need to check. We just have to, we need these restraints. We need, we, we, we need, we need this manner. And, and sometimes, yes, you are stopped. At where you spend the spirit trap, you are, you are annoyed. But at the same time, know that those people are helping to save your life. And this is very important. Let us respect those men and women. Fellow citizens, as I've said, we'll be talking about issue by issue. But it's about time that this country got back to the drawing table. It's about time that this government changed its approach. What is happening right now? It's not inspiring any confidence, it's not inspiring any hope. And it's not enough to just say we have done this, we have done this. You need to keep doing. Incumbency is defended by works and not works. It's your works that will defend you. Listen to what others are saying. When somebody, if someone speaks, yes, there's those who speak. When they are speaking, there is no content. Ignore us. But when you listen to the content and you, there's wisdom. Learn, pick the wisdom, apply it. It's for the good of this country. And our desire is not that we must see the government fail. That's not the desire, because government is all of us. Whoever is president today, tomorrow will not be the president. Who thought that those who are not there today would, be, would not be there? Nobody imagined that, but it, it happens. That's the way it is. You have a government today, a new government the other day, and so forth. That's the way it is. So there's nothing personal. And each and every time that we bring out the issues, sometimes, yes, will bring out these issues in the strongest language possible so we can understand. We are doing this because we want this country to get back to work. Stop politicking. It's not, it's, not, it's not going to help this country when you are politicking. Look at what to put food in the homes of the people of Zambia. What to bring income to the people of Zambia. Look at what will bring innovation and learn from those examples that I've worked elsewhere is through innovation that jobs will be created. It's through industry that jobs will be created. It's not by all this that we're seeing trade and so forth and then promoting other corporations from abroad to come and take over the mines. And so we have found an investor. We have been there before. Which investor? would come to have the interests of the miners, only to have the interests of this country. 
These are mining co corporations that through price transferring, they are not declaring profit. They are not paying anything. I mean, our copper is being depleted. Our emeralds are being depleted. I took what the emerald sector is foreign. The biggest, the biggest controller of the emerald sector is a foreign. And we are here citizens. And we are cheer leaders. They are taking out our resources, we are cheering. And we think that, no, through taxation or through foreign investors, that's how this can to come out of the mess. It will not. And by attacking civil servants, the civil servants are taken for granted. These are the ones that are running this economy practically, and not the politicians. Everything, when something goes wrong, no, you are branding this politician, this party. Don't brand those civil servants. Don't brand them. Don't align them to political parties. If you have a vision, focus on the vision. It shows lack of vision. Lack of direction. Because if you are in charge of a family, in charge of a minister, a permanent secretary, how can you be talking about people not, uh, not implementing the government program? Just because there are no means. There are no resources. They are not flowing. These civil servants, if they don't have the money, don't have the, the, the resources, they are not moving, how do you expect them to deliver? They can't perform miracles. So by insulting them, hailing vitriol at civil servants, the police, the army, it will not help this country at all. Respect these men and women in uniform. Respect the civil service, but at the same time inspire confidence in them. Where there's no, where there's no vision, the nation perishes. Speak the vision. And a good leader must also speak through others. Mentorship, guide. Let every government department be functional. This is what the people of Zambia want. And this is not too much to ask for. Thank you.